kind of from the beginning, I think is, is really a good place to start. You know, when I was growing up, everything that I, I learned and all the aspects of success that I learned were all relative to one real kind of fundamental experience, and that was being part of a team. And in, in, in those experiences, whether it was playing peewee football or it was playing in lacrosse, whatever it was, within those failures and successes uh, is where the foundations of my self-confidence began. I had an amazing upbringing and a really uh, caring, loving family. And I think the experiences that they allotted for me and gave me were something that were, were really special. Uh, from those experiences, as I said, you know, I got to participate in these athletics, most especially in football, which really kind of transformed me. I was a quarterback for most of the teams I played on, and that was my dream. My dream was to go into college and, and play at a Division I level and, and win the Heisman Trophy, right? Just like every kid out there. Um, and that's what drove me. That was my purpose. And I think that when, when I had that purpose and it was attached to my self-confidence, I was, I was able to achieve what I wanted to achieve, and that was really to be a part of a team on a, on a different level, whether we won or we lost. So I think that was really the start of, of my understanding, my personal discovery that's been going on ever since then was, was the, the recognition that, that my purpose is driven by the, the, the forging of my self-confidence as well as my commitment to living a team life. The, the reality is, is we, we can't do it alone. I mean, that's one of the, the, the fundamental truths that I've learned. No matter who you are, if you look at any phenomenal person in history, nobody does it alone, period. Once you understand that you need a team around you in order to succeed, then you're willing to uh, win and lose as a team. You're willing, you're willing to commit yourself at the expense of the guy who's next to you or the girl who's next to you. And, and once you have that and you get that back from a, another person, then it really is a remarkable thing. You're, you're able to, to go to whole new levels and whole, whole new heights. And so I was recruited to play lacrosse at the Division I level at Penn State. And really, you know, it was one thing that was nice because it perpetuated my dream of, of playing football. The, the reality is, is when I showed up freshman study hall, and, and I'm sitting there and, you know, my, my, my best friend for 20 plus years now is All-American from, from Baltimore. And I'm sitting next to Mike and, and I, I'm like, hey, man, you know, tryouts are, are coming up this weekend. I'm going to walk on the football team and, and you know, and, and make Penn State and play with Jopa. And, and I'm going to make my mark. He's like, well, I think you better ask the, the new freshman quarterback who they just brought in. And, and I go, who's that? And he goes, it's the guy sitting in the front of your row. And there was this bohemian <laughs> sitting in the front row. And, and I looked down, and I said, that guy? And he's like, yeah, that guy. And I go, who is he? And he was like, that's Kerry Collins. And as we all know, Kerry went on to lead one of Penn State's greatest teams of all time. He's been in multiple Super Bowls. So unfortunately, instead of still chasing my dream and rising to the occasion, I let the real first substantial fear kind of take over my self-confidence and, and start pushing it away and pushing it down, burying it in, into my soul. And I think that was really the, the tide that shifted where you know, I started to lose that momentum because I, I really let the fear of what it would be like to fail in that regard, to walk on that team and not to make the team. And so that, that all of a sudden, this wonderful, you know, 12 year path or however long I've been playing organized sports, all of a sudden just boom, hits this brick wall and I'm knocked back and, and, I, and I was rattled. And I've never been rattled like before that before. I've never had my soul kind of jolted out of its, its you know, this ingrained path that I was on and all of a sudden it happened. So because of that, I had to all of a sudden redefine who I was. I was no longer the captain of the football team, the vice president of student council. I was no longer the big man on campus. I was no longer uh, the person that was gonna succeed, you know, just because it was, I laid the steps out for myself. And I allowed that to change who I was. 
So within that, you know, me getting knocked off my little, my hobby horse there, I, all of a sudden I, I had to redefine who I was and what I wanted to become. And unfortunately I'd never done that before in my life. And to, to enhance that fear that was in me, I, I, I went for the easiest thing that really had, you know, kind of always been in my life to a certain extent. And, and that was, I kind of immerse myself into this whole persona of, of Elvis. And that's what my nickname was in, in college. But it was much more than just kind of wearing my sequin jumpsuit and, and, and singing, I'll haul lay off of my blue suede shoes. It was literally uh, moving into the, the dysfunctionality and the, 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 the abuses that, that were associated with his with with his lifestyle and and you know it wasn't long before I was reading books about you know famous rock stars who were a mess and I was reading you know Hunter S. Thompson stuff and really believed that that lifestyle was going to instill a, a whole new sense of success in me. All of a sudden, what what happens regardless of of, of whether you want it to or not, if you allow that lifestyle, that chaos, that that uh, impressionable mindset that, that drinking and, and, and drugs and all those things are the way to go, then it's gonna pull you down. It's gonna suck you under. That started pretty, pretty rapidly for me. And it wasn't long before I had uh, really embraced that to cover up my fears and to uh, reconstitute self-confidence through chaos.